knowledge assessment T4, T4 coming from topic 4 in the training package. So this is how the video works. I ask a question or a problem is posed. You then pause the video and have a go at trying to solve the problem or answer the multi-choice, whichever the case may be. Then a pause or a hint uh, is provided. Again, you pause the video and continue doing the solution. Then if you continue the video on, uh, an answer is given with an explanation. That's the power of this system. And then step five, again, you continue to uh, play the video to the next question. So let's get underway with a multi-choice. The inductance of a coil can be increased by inserting what? A copper core, a brass core, an aluminium core, or a steel core. So again, we're now thinking about factors affecting inductance. You pause here. Right, hint, to increase inductance, the core material must be able to conduct a magnetic field well. So which of those do you think conducts a magnetic field well? A, copper, brass, C, aluminium, D, steel. The answer is, in this particular case, the only magnetic material in any of that list was the steel, and steel is a very good conductor of a magnetic field. So that will increase its inductance. Two, why are inductors commonly used in a fluorescent light fittings? A, to improve the power factor. B, to limit the current once the tube is conducting. C, to prevent harmonics or D, to assist the starting circuit. So pause here. Here's the hint. What are the characteristics of an inductor? So think about how an inductor is constructed and how it restricts current. How does it do that? So it's used to limit the current once the tube is conducting. That's what it's very good at. Until the tube strikes, no current, therefore no restriction of current through the inductor. But once the tube conducts, the impedance of the gas in the tube goes from several mega ohms down to a fraction of an ohm. Therefore, the inductor then limits the current. Three, which of the coil symbols pictured represents a variable ferrite cord inductor? So again, pause here. Here's the hint. Which parts of the symbol represent the types of cores or the core types? So the answer here is B, with nothing here. This is air, a solid line, represents steel or ferrous material. And a dotted line represents ferret, ferrite. The arrows represent the variable. So the arrows are the variables. So the variable ferrite core was B. Four, determine the voltage of the self-induced EMF when the current through the 0.5 Henry inductor is reduced to zero from 740 milliamps in 250 milliseconds or quarter of a second. So pause here while you think about the formula you'll need. Here's the hint, V equals L times I divided by change in time. So 
So here we go, the voltage is the inductance multiplied by the current divided by the change in time. In this particular case, we went from zero, 250 milliseconds to zero, so the change in time is 250 milliseconds or 0.25 of a second. Our inductance was already in 0.5 of a Henry. There it is there. And we had 740 milliamps or 0.74 of an amp multiplied by our change in time. We multiply those three things together and in this particular case we get 1.48 volts. Question 5. Determine the time constant of a circuit with a 270k ohms in series with an inductor of 0 0.95 henrys supplied by a 230 volt DC also calculate the final current. So pause here. Here's your hint. Time constant equals L divided by R and I equals V divided by R. Two formulas you'll need to do this. So here's the answer, the first one. So our time constant is equal to, or tau, is equal to L divided by R. So we're simply our 0.95 divided by 270,000, remember it's times 10 to the 3, and that comes out at um, 3.5 times 10 to the minus 6, or we'd round that to 3.52 microseconds. Now that we know that, the current is simply, the final current is simply the voltage divided by the resistance, 230 volts divided by our 270k, giving us a final current of 0 0.851 milliamps. So from the list below, what is another name for a watt meter? So what does watt a watt meter measure? So A, is it a dynamometer? B, is it a clamp meter? C, is it a moving coil meter? D, is it an LCR meter? So the hint is, what does a watt meter measure? The answer is a dynamometer used to measure car output power in watts. So a dynamometer measures power. Power is measured in watts. A watt meter measures in watts. So another name for a watt meter is a dynamometer. So that brings us to the end of T4. That was a reasonably short one. Again, thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about electromagnetism.